The following three cases are unsolved missing person cases of those who remain still missing. Case number one, Kimberly Rachel Norwood. Kimberly was last seen at approximately 5.15 p.m. in her hometown of Hallsville, Texas on May the 20th of 1989. She was last walking with three friends in the Candy Creek Estate subdivision. The four children went their separate ways less than one mile from Kimberly's house. She never arrived home and has never been seen or heard from since. Less than one hour before Kimberly disappeared, her and her mother got in an argument over the telephone after her mother refused to let Kimberly spend the night at a friend's house. She is not believed to have run away from home, but her parents think she may have been abducted. The home where Kimberly resided at the time of her disappearance has since been torn down, but her parents live in another house close by. She was within two weeks of graduating from Hallsville Middle School and was due to enter Hallsville Junior High School in the fall. She was a good student who had tested into accelerated learning classes. Her case remains unsolved. Kimberly Rachel Norwood is classified as endangered missing, but some agencies list her as a non-family abduction. She was 12 years old at the time of her disappearance, making her 41 today. She is described as a Caucasian female with brown hair and brown eyes. At the time of her disappearance, she was 5'4 and 110 pounds. Her date of birth is October the 12th, 1976. She goes by the nicknames Kim or Kimbo. She has a surgical scar on her abdomen and her ears are pierced. She was last seen wearing black head tennis shoes and blue or black blue jeans. A white t-shirt with a picture of cows on it with the word milk duds on the front. She had a black bow in her hair and a swash watch. She was wearing a gold ring with an aquamarine stone. If you have any information regarding Kimberly's whereabouts or case, please contact the Harris County Sheriff's Office or the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children listed below. Case number two, Michelle Angela Yarnell. Michelle is last seen at a residence in the vicinity of the 3900th block of Ozark View Road on October the 25th, 2003 in Aviven, Missouri. Her husband of three years, Michael Shane Yarnell, stated that he had came home from work and Michelle was gone. He said he assumed she had gone to Holt Summit, Missouri to visit her mother, Mary Ann Asher Chapman, and would return in a few days, but she never did. Her mother reported her missing seven days later after Michael came to her house to see his wife and discovered that she had never arrived in Holt Summit. Two weeks after Michelle vanished, her mother received a postcard that was supposedly from Rochelle. It was postmarked on November the 8th, 2003 from a small town in Arkansas. The postcard stated that Michelle was en route to Texas to visit the family of someone named Gary. Rochelle's loved ones do not know anyone by this name and believe that she did not either. Her mother doesn't think that Michelle actually sent the postcard stating that the handwriting appeared markingly different from her daughter's writing. Her mother had last contact with her when they spoke on the phone eight days before Michelle disappeared. She stated their conversation was normal and Michelle did not mention she was seeing another man. In November of 2007, Michael Yarnell was named as a person of interest in Michelle's disappearance. By then he had moved and authorities had lost touch with him. In May of 2008, Michael was listed as a missing person. His friends and family claimed they hadn't heard from him since November the 5th, 2005. Michael was located in Biloxi, Mississippi in November. He was arrested and charged with felony counts of forgery and tampering with physical evidence in connection with his wife's disappearance. He admitted to have handwritten the postcard to Michelle's mother in order to disrupt police's investigation and handwriting experts confirmed his story. The following month, Michael was additionally charged with Michelle's murder. Authorities stated that he confessed the crime to him. He said during an argument, he pushed Michelle off of their home's deck 
and she died instantly. He said that he dumped her body offshore from an uninhabited island in the Lake of the Ozarks, just four miles from the Yarnell's residence. Investigators have searched the body of water, but have not found any evidence. In June of 2009, Michael pled guilty of involuntary manslaughter. He was sentenced to seven years in prison and released in July of 2013. When Michelle disappeared, her mother was undergoing therapy for cancer. Her mother states that she would never just run off and not speak with her. Michelle Angela Yarnell is classified as an endangered missing. She was 28 years old at the time of her disappearance, making her 42 today. She is described as a Caucasian female with light brown hair and brown eyes. She stands at 5 feet tall and 170 pounds. Her date of birth is May the 20th of 1975 and she goes by the nickname Angie. She has a pierced tongue, pierced ears, and a tattoo of jagged barbed wire fins and black ink around her right wrist. She has a tattoo of a green frog on her left shoulder blade and a tattoo of the word obey written in black cryptic writing. She has small surgical scars on each side of her hip. She wears glasses with gold wire rims or possibly clear contacts. She was possibly wearing a white gold or silver watch and a white gold or silver bracelet worn on her right wrist and emerald earrings. If you have any information on Michelle Yarnell's whereabouts or case, please contact the Morgan County Sheriff's Office or you can use the email findangieyarnell at yahoo.com. Our final case, number three, is Sarah Feather. Sarah was last seen in Sanford, Florida on July the 28th, 2015. Authorities believe she had left on her own accord and may be in the company of a female juvenile. Few details are available regarding her case. Sarah Feather is classified as an endangered runaway. She was 17 years old at the time of her disappearance, making her 19 today. She is described as a Caucasian female with brown hair and brown eyes, standing at 5'5 and 130 pounds. Her date of birth is April the 12th, 1998. It is unknown what she was last seen wearing. If you have any information regarding the whereabouts of Sarah Feather, please contact the Sanford Police Department or National Center for Missing and Exploited Children listed below. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button if you have not already. And hit the notification bell so you know when I upload my next video. And I will catch you guys on my next video.